Welcome to the special meeting of the Glendale Arts and Culture Commission, June 30th, 2022 at 2.30 p.m. Let's do roll call. Commissioners Vidor. Here. Zadorian. Here. Chairperson Yank. Here. Vice Chair Vyer and Commissioner Tufank. Yep. Agenda item 1A, report of the recorder reposting the agenda. The agenda for the June 30th, 2022 regular meeting was posted on June 27th, 2022 on the bulletin board outside of City Hall. Agenda item 2A, citywide public art landmarks RFQ, design concept proposals for Verdugo Park mural. Motion recommending that the city council authorize the city manager or a designee to enter into an agreement for commission of artwork with an artist artist team to design, fabricate, and install a public art piece for the Verdugo Park mural and an amount not to exceed $50,000 dispersed from the Urban Art Program Fund. Um, so again, Principal Arts, and Culture, um, Principal Arts and Culture Administrator Jennifer Fukutomi Jones, just to provide a quick overview and recap of what has happened thus far. In October of 2020, um, the City Council approved an uh, authorizing an execution of a public um, a professional services agreement to work with Labas Projects to professionally uh, procure and manage the services for the commission of public artwork for long-term to permanent pieces of up to 10 throughout the city. Uh, in February of 2021, Labas Projects began working with staff to establish a, a strategic plan for recommending locations for these said artworks. In May of 2021, Labas Projects presented their proposed strategic plan, which listed approximately um, six locations throughout the city for pu public artworks that are listed within the, within the staff report. In August of 2021, Labas uh, Projects released a citywide public arts RFQ uh, through the online uh, application platform Submittable. The uh, staff, the RFQ closed in October of 2021 and staff received 256 applications for consideration. In September of 2021, the commission appointed Chairperson Yank as the representative for the commission to review uh, the applications for the RFQ. We are here today to discuss the Verdugo Park mural. We have four artists that are here to present their design concept proposals. And we have also included exhibit C, which provides guidance criteria for the commission to review the, the proposals in addition to exhibit D, which utilizes a, a tool for which commissioners to, to assess the proposal. So right now I'd like to introduce Bo Bass from the Bass Projects who is gonna introduce the artists. Bo? Hi, Bo Bass, Labas Projects, um, consultant on the project. Um, we're excited to present four artists today to the Arts Commission for review. Uh, each of the artists has actually provided a site-specific concept for the uh, for the mural opportunity. Um, who's who do we have first? Dave Kim. Um, Dave Young Kim uh, is our first artist, and um, I'll let him present his proposal. Okay, we're uh, joining. Hey, Dave, are you there? I am. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. I'm going to pull up your proposal. Okay. Dave, you have five minutes to do your proposal, and then we'll give you a one-minute warning when it's your turn, when it, we're wrapping up. Five minutes? Okay. Sure. Okay. Do you see the screen? I do, yeah. Okay. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay. Cool. Hi, my name is Dave Kim, and uh, let's see, just to introduce myself, I was uh, born in LA and raised in K-Town, and I now live uh, in the South Bay in Hermosa Beach. Um, I have three young children, and I was able to take them to the park to actually um, witness the activity in the park. I, I actually submitted a proposal before I did that. And then when I visited the park, I realized um, I needed to modify it. Uh, there's something about uh, the location of the facilities very close to a lot of the activity. There are, I think, um, eight birthday parties happening, multiple church groups, so many individuals picnicking, um, so much life and activity. It's such a uh, it was just teeming with life and, um, it's very green, um, in terms of visually, but the people brought all the color and, um, sorry, if you, uh, okay. So, um, I guess I'll just tell you when to turn. Yep. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Let's see. So, yeah, it's, it's a clear hub in the city. And um, I think the only color that was there uh, besides the playground was a little bit of color in the skate park. And um, I realized I wanted to bring, um, reflect the activity through color um, into the park. So uh, that was one of the main changes I made from the initial mock-up. Um, so just going into the concept of what sort of uh, main themes I picked up from all my research was, um, I think it's this idea of Glendale, uh, the history of Glendale from past and present, um, starting from the Tongva, um, who were the originators uh, 3,500 years ago. Um, originating uh, inhabitants of the land um, to everyone throughout history and to the present. And I think uh, the thing that was interesting to me was uh, the city has changed so much, um, but uh, the, un the one thing that hasn't changed is uh, the Verdugo Hills. They bear witness to all the changes unchanged as the city changed hands and became what it is today. Um, as you know, Glendale is very unique and it's one of the few cities in the country that um, acknowledges unfortunate racial history. And it's, uh, or you guys maybe passed a formal resolution to address it. Um, and then the other thing geographically that was very interesting was, uh, you know, the, the Edward Emery's saying that the, the city sparkled like a jewel. I was like, where is this jewel? What's this jewel about? And um, there's a quote, it's, he says it sparkles like a jewel, but uh, it doesn't make sense until you understand geographically the city is nestled um, right at the base of this, the hills, the Verdugo Mountains. So again, going back to the Verdugo Mountains, um, I think the challenge with this particular site is that it's multi-faceted and the walls aren't one single plane, but there's all these different planes. And um, I think with light, it makes, uh, if it's a single color, the light changes the single color into different hues. So I just took the opportunity to make every plane a different color. Um, Let's see. And then um, I think naturally I was drawn to the diverse concentration of groups of people, um, the largest groups being Armenian, Filipino, Korean, Latino, and Black. And I wanted to represent those people um, as, as, I, as best as I could. Um, Dave, we have about one minute left. Would, would, you, would it be possible to move to the images? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I was told I had 10 minutes. So I, I kind of prepared something a little bit longer, but yeah, let's, let's, let's go ahead to the images. Okay. We have the first image up. Okay. So this is a, a golden Eagle, which represents the Armenian people. And behind it is a forget me not flower. And, um, the sun and the moon represents time. And you see the different color planes, depending on what part of the, uh, the protrusion of the wall, and then you see a part of the Verdugo Hills. Uh, next slide, please. And so um, that represents the Armenian people. Um, here you see a, a arrowhead that represents a Tonga, and then um, the official flower for uh, the city of Glendale is the hibiscus, as well as uh, it being the same for the Korean people. And so that represents uh, both the city and the Korean people and just a natural element and then different planes of color there. Um, next slide, please. And here you see um, the sapungita, that's the uh, national Filipino flower and it's a relative of jasmine. So. You know, although there is an actual fragrance, you, you sense that there's a fragrance there. You see the Verdugo Mountains again. They're all continuous behind, um, throughout the walls. And then um, all the colors of the uh, uh, Latino um, countries, including Spain, um, referring back to um, uh, Verdugo, who the, the namesake of the hills, the original landowner of Glendale, 
And then you see the Pacific rail system there, which is was so key to bringing life and uh, growing the population of the city. Also, um, symbolically represents um, Mr. Brand, who is um, very key in the uh, development of Glendale. And then next um, slide, please. And then so when you come in from the parking lot, this is um, the first image you see. It's um, the Garrett family, the first black family that was uh, there. And I consider them pioneers because of all the sort of the sacrifices they made, um, laying sort of the foundations for all these other, for this diversity to bloom in Glendale, the future generations. Um, again, different colors for different planes. And um, the idea of home, Glendale is home to all those people that I just mentioned. Um, and so I like that word home. Next slide, please. And just so you can get a sense of what the, those are all just mock-ups. So it's just uh, like photos taken out and pasted, cut and pasted. Um, this is a, a mural I did in Oakland. There's just, there's a, a depiction of a bird. So you get a idea of that. Next slide, please. Um, that's uh, in San Francisco for Asian Heritage Month. These are different depictions of mountains. So you can see how uh, a painted mountain would look like in my style. Next slide, please. This is also a painting in San Francisco. Um, just wanted to show you, that's actually a Sapungita right there um, because this was painted in historical Filipino town in San Francisco. And then next slide, please. And then just so you can get uh, an idea of what a black and white figurative painting would look like um, as the uh, Garrett family would be rendered and the trains. So that's an example there. Um, and then finally, let, next slide, please. That's a mural in Alameda. And um, just to give you a sense of color and different elements, flower, floral elements in large blocks of color, and then also the birds as well. So uh, more examples of what the actual painted mural would look like. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's it for my presentation. I'm open to questions at this point. Um, Okay, uh, Chairperson Ying, shall I open up for questions? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, Commissioner Vidor, I believe you're first. Let's try that again. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I really like your work. And um, uh, I, I actually have a, a more general question. I want to back up a little bit and maybe for the sake of the public viewing and, and also so we're all on the same page. Um, it would be great to see what the, the building, in other words, a, a photograph maybe of the uh, different frontages of the building that's going to be painted. I assume that everybody is proposing a mural design for the same structure. And it was a little bit hard because that was a, a rendering and not an actual, you know, cartoon of what, what was going to be put up to tell, you know, what you're looking at, what's in the background, what the sighting is of the different sides of the building and the different murals being placed on them. So is there any way we can kind of have a just a look at that building, a, re, a live photograph of it rather than starting this way? Because... I can pull up a photograph, and I mean a, a Google Map image. In the meantime, I think um, some of the other artists have the the image that you're talking about, Commissioner Vidor. But in the interim, I can pull that up while we continue questions. Oh, okay. Uh, that was my only question. Thank you. Um, I'm assuming these are questions directed to the artists, and then we make our own comments afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I actually do not have any questions. Thank you very much. Um, just a point of clarification. Uh, uh, thank you, first of all, very much, Dave, for this presentation um, and for your thoughtfulness in the symbolism that you were using. I was curious. Uh, you're proposing that all of these would be it would be a paint it would be painted. There wouldn't be yeah, just, just material painted, wise. Um, material wise, yeah, they'd be all painted. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's all the questions I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us, Dave. And um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to the Bass Projects, and we will let you know if we have any questions, additional questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye. Okay. Let me pull this. I think at the end might be best. Right, that's how we've typically done it. Just so I can make my comments on all of them at once because that's how I kind of rationalize in my head which one comes first. So for reference commissioners, this was included as an agenda, I mean uh, an exhibit, exhibit B specifically in your agenda packet. So this is the image of the building that was sent to the artist. They were also sent um, renderings of the building in addition to photographs of the actual building, but this is the building in, in that we're discussing specifically for the murals, which is included in part of your agenda packet. Um, was there anything else, Bo, that, that the artists were sent? I mean, that was... The entire perimeter of the uh, skin of the building is being muraled, correct? This is... Um, is it possible to move to the next artist? Yes. Yes. Okay. And next we have Ndbisi Okoye. Let me admit him. Ndbisi, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Hi, NDBC, Bo from the Bass Projects here. Uh, we've got you on with uh, three of the arts commissioners. Um, okay. We look forward to you presenting your uh, project and proposal. Um, uh, give you the floor. All right, sounds good. All right. So first I'll say, what up, though, which is Detroit for hello. Um, nice meeting all of you. Um, let's talk about the goal of this project. The aim of this project is to create art that highlights and reflects the community, history, and future of Bear Dugu Park. This project is also meant to uplift Glendale, California. I want to help you guys tell a story that's compelling in a clear and compelling way. So here I have the timing, um, which was kind of flexible, but generally speaking, a project of this sort takes two months to complete from initial sketch to painting, um, but we kind of fast tracked that a little bit here. Um, and we will have to adjust it based on like the timing of flying out there, getting supplies and all that stuff. But here, here's a rough timeline. I'll talk about myself, why me for this project. And I have worked with a number of clients over my eight years uh, in this industry of painting murals and being a freelance creator owning my own business from Universal Music Group to Netflix. And DBC, I'm sorry, uh, we're not seeing your screen. Would it be possible to share your screen? Sure. Cool. Can you guys see this? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So here's the mural time that I was talking about, uh, where I talk about myself a little bit, my clients, uh, some of them, here's a sample size of them, and my portfolio. Since we have limited time, I'll just scroll through them and talk to, talk about it a little bit. Um, this is a series of eight murals I've done for Universal Music Group back in 2019 out in Santa Monica, California, so not too far from you guys. This one I did on the ACLU of Michigan's headquarters in Detroit, Michigan, a vote mural. This was a uh, part of a campaign that I starred in, did the voiceover for, uh, for Pepsi, call it Full of Detroit Soul. This is a project, a uh, series of two videos I created with Netflix called Sowing the Seeds, where I talk about the diversity and inclusion efforts at Netflix. And I created all of the illustrations and vibrant paintings throughout the piece. This is a mural I did in Detroit for Foot Locker's campaign called For the Love of Basketball, where I paint a, ba I paint a basketball court near Detroit. This is a series of three murals that I painted in Detroit, Michigan at a place called The Commons, uh, a local care facility. And this is a digital illustration I created for Oprah Magazine to honor George Floyd. Um, and it kind of went viral a couple years ago. Um, Oprah even posted it on her social media. And if you guys don't know, she doesn't really post art like that. 
And this is a, my most recent mural I did up in East Lansing, Michigan to honor Dr. Robert L. Green, a civil rights icon and the first person who him and his family were the first people to integrate East Lansing, Michigan, what was historically a sundown town. Um, so he was one of the ones to help change that. And this is a mural I painted um, on 8 Mile in Detroit, Michigan. It's called Detroit is a Black Woman. There's a poem and whole synopsis about it. And this is the budget that I'm proposing. And the concept and inspiration behind this piece was mostly from a, a, a news report that I watched uh, about this woman from Glendale called My Carol. Uh, she's a black woman who walks around and told people that they're noble and that they're blessed and highly favored. Um, and she was just very inspiring to me. Um, and she made the news for an unfortunate reason. Uh, ser uh, a group of young teenagers told her that she better get out of town before sundown comes. Um, and how that led the city um, to make the ordinance about disavowing the history of being a sundown in Glendale. Um, so that inspired me to write a, p a piece of poetry um, and also uh, create this vibrant mural just based off her words and her impact in the community. And I thought that it would be important for the city as a whole to say, like, to disavow their history and being a sundown town, as you guys have already done, but in a very visual and attractive way as well. So the, the poem is called You Belong. And I'm going to read it for you guys. You belong wherever your feet take you, wherever your mind wander, wherever the sun shine and where it sleeps, wherever justice resides and nobility arises, wherever love is shown and community is nurtured and culture is shared, you belong there. However, God made you as beautiful as you are with every perfectly placed imperfection, fully being you with little discretion, naps, wraps, and every other crown, glisten in the moonlight when you walk around because you belong wherever, whenever, and however you choose. You will always belong here. And that would inspire this piece that I also drew, uh, highlighting the words you belong, showing a bunch of different people of different colors and national origins, and also highlighting uh, Glendale, California with the palm trees and the vibrant colors um, and color palette. So here's a zoomed in view um, where I highlight more of my patterns and the different people in the piece. And here it is in situation. Um, I picked a flat wall because it would be the easiest to paint on. Um, but in a perfect si situation, I would want to extend it around the entire uh, facade of the of this facility. Um, but if that's not possible, I would just want to extend elements like maybe more palm trees or more faces of people in the local community um, to give a more holistic view of that everybody belongs at this park in at, in Glendale for for a broader message. And then from there, I wanted to like, my brain was like, well, how do you like exemplify this message in a very large way? Um, so I took this same design and expounded it to have a bigger impact. And I thought, what if we use that circle basketball court and painted it on that? So you can see it from a drone and hopefully from space, like that everybody in Glendale believes that you belong here. Um, so I took my Carol's words and put it on the outer rim up here saying you are noble. And I wanted to also include your blessed and highly favored if you look closely under you belong. So her words are ingrained into the, the actual facade of the park um, and in the foundation of the city, because that's the future you guys are trying to build. Um, and I thought she was a good foundation to start on. And that's all. Thank you guys for your time. Should we proceed with questions? Chairperson Yank, Commissioner Vidor. So the concept of You Belong That's Lovely, by the way, um, and to universally put that out there, I think is, is really wonderful. Um, but the question is where the, you've got the basketball court thing and you've got, I assume that the, the wall, the facade of the building is the project. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing is um, something different or is that part of the project or is that just an idea that um, Debussy had? I think initially uh, our strategic plan was to paint the basketball court as well as the building and then there were some technical questions with parks about the basketball court. So I know some of the artists are proposing uh, one or both, but the primary location is the building. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Zadorian. Okay, so I was just a little confused as to, so the rendering does not show, or sorry, the photo that's provided does not show it wrap around, um, but you did state that it's possible and that you could add some palm trees. I mean, I would have liked to see exactly what it would look, look like if it was actually wrapped around, what you'd plan or intend on doing. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to understand if that's within the $50,000 budget that you provided or if that's going to be additional. Debbie, are you there? I think we lost him. Um, I guess we could always ask the questions later. And Debbie, are you still there? Uh, was I too rough? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we can we can make sure to follow up. That's okay. That's fine. Question. Um, Chairperson Yang, do you have any questions, or we can also follow up with NBC if he gets back? Yeah, mine mine was a similar question to, to Commissioner Zadorian's, just about what he would be imagining since he mentioned extending the mural, what he would be imagining that would look like. Okay. Uh, Gary Schaefer, Director of Library Arts and Culture. He's still on the screen, so I would try and move him into the waiting room. Thank you. Okay, we have our next artist, Erin Miller Ray. And I'll bring her in from the lobby. Hi, Erin, are you there? Erin, are you there? Hey, I'm here. Hi, how are you? Are you able to show your, is your camera available? I'm Great, here. Hi. we see you, wonderful. Um, welcome to the meeting. I'm gonna pull up the proposal that you had. Okay, here we go, Erin. Beautiful. Hi, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. My name is Erin Miller Ray, and if you don't mind, we'll go to the next slide. Um, I'm here today to tell you about my mural um, and what I'm actually now calling a sculpture. So um, first off, I'm an artist and a designer, and I actually live in Glendale. I'm about 10 minutes down the road from Verdugo Park. I'm just over the freeway um, up Chevy Chase Canyon. So I'm so, so excited and so honored to have this opportunity to potentially bring artwork to my community. Um, so when I first visited the site, when I found out about the call, um, I went over there just to kind of get a sense of the space and the surroundings, see who was there, who was using the property and the facility, and really kind of immerse myself in, in where this mural was going to live. And I was quickly um, taken aback by how cool this structure was and the facility itself. And so my idea kind of expanded immediately from let's make a mural to let's turn this building into a sculpture and make the 2D element of this artwork actually 3D and highlight the architecture, bring out these cool tile details, the arches, bring highlight the original design that exists and make this um, a sculpture itself that patrons can um, immerse themselves in and engage with and really use and act as a pillar for this community and for this park. Um, so as you can see in the concept inspiration photos, these are also well-known architectures and architects and designers 
um, who have done a similar style where they're taking artwork and highlighting the pre-existing uh, structures to bring about a more sculptural piece. And if you'll flip to this next slide, I'll show you my take on that. And as you can see here, um, this is the north wall. I'm really, what I'm hoping to do through this design is use um, a vivid color palette and um, shapes and line work to highlight and uh, just bring forth kind of a, a vivid sculptural installation where people can walk through as they're going down the bathroom hallway. They're kind of immersing themselves into this design. Um, they're able to walk on top of the design. So it feels like it's anchored to the ground actually, as if it were um, a sculpture in itself um, through the, the design work that's painted on the ground. You can see more of that in this next slide, if you will, please. And here you can also really see where I'm trying to, um, my goal through this is to do color combinations that are exciting and really pop and engage. Um, and this is a part of my design where I really want it to represent the cultural diversity of Glendale and this and all that this city has to offer through its community. And so it's kind of um, all of these different styles and shapes brought together into a super unique cohesive design that kind of has a movement and feels like it's moving off of the building onto the ground um, just to kind of show that cohesiveness and celebrate that diversity and um, the inclusive representation. If you flip to that next slide, we can see more of this on the back wall. Same thing like for here, I really picture the baseball team taking all their photos in front of this wall and people engaging and walking through and um, on top of the artwork that's on the ground, it'll wrap the building. And um, my goal through wrapping all of these shapes around the roof lines and underneath the roof is to really give it that sculptural feeling and to turn the art, the architecture into art and a mural into a sculpture. And we can flip to this next one. Here's our elevations. You can get a little more clearly detailed look at what you'll see on each side. If we can flip to this next one, same thing here. So as you see, the design will wrap all the way around, giving it that cohesive feel. And onto the next one, please. Here is the plan view. So this is looking down at the uh, the painted design that will be on the floor. Um, and I just, what I tried to do is just kind of mirror it on both sides, but give it sort of um, a layered element there. And if you can go to the next one, please. Okay, and so when in my time, this is a little added thing that I put in here. When I spend my time um, on the site, I actually, um, talked to a couple of local students who had, uh, they told me that they had played basketball, th basketball there for years. And I was just kind of um, conversing with them and asking what they would want to see. And they were so excited to hear that murals were coming to the grounds. And um, this one kid said, he, want, he said, paint everything, color, color everywhere. He was really excited and I talked to him about the basketball court and just kind of the state that it was in, asked him about the lines not being there and the, the lack of the um, basketball nets. And they just got so excited about, um, and I, I had mentioned to them, what would you think if there was basketball, a basketball court mural? And they got so excited. And so I just wanted to let you guys know today that I have worked in this space before and done several basketball court murals um, in LA and throughout the US. And um, it's something that I'm super passionate about because through my art as an artist, what I wanna do is give uh, viewers and communities tangible artwork. And I feel like through these basketball courts, there's such opportunity to bring communities together. 
And that's my hope through my art is to encourage engagement and community and healthy lifestyles and rethink how we can approach artwork. So if we'll, we go to the next slide, I'll show you. We have one more minute, Erin. Okay, thank you. I'll just show you quickly. These are some basketball courts I've done in the past and I did a simple mock-up taking one of these former designs onto the Verdugo basketball court. So this is just a concept I think could really enhance um, the facility mural. Um, should we decide to go that route, we could talk more about this. And then on the next slide, another opportunity I saw was um, adding uh, custom seating to the facility. And I think it just enhances more um, community engagement, can draw people in closer to this facility. There were tons of students out there when I was there sitting on the picnic tables. So I think this is a really cool opportunity to add in more of that sculptural element through these custom designs to mirror the design work on the facility. So just a fun way to bring more people in and use this area even more. And then onto the next slide, please. Same thing, this is just a little bit about the story of how I talked to some of the community members. So we can go to the next one. A little bit about me, I mentioned that I work um, in to grow public artwork within communities and my hope is to uh, explore creativity and possibility, healthy lifestyles and engagement within these communities through my work in public art. So that's it. Thank you so much for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, yeah. Thank you, Erin. I think we'll go to Commissioner Vidor first for questions. Thank you, Erin. Um, really lovely uh, and colorful and joyful and uh, definitely representational of uh, our, our community in a very abstract way, which is, which is really nice. Um, I don't really have any questions other than the question that's already been asked a couple times, and that is, uh, we, we seem to have proposals that include different things, either partial building, complete wrap around the building, or building plus um, basketball courts. So I guess I'd like to evaluate all of this with a firm understanding of what the expectations are going to be, um, and that f I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Commissioner Zadorian. Okay. Um, I did want to say that, you know, from the ones we've seen so far, yours is definitely the one that has been the most creative with the angles and approaches and engagement with the public um, and utilizing creative, different creative mediums. I do really love the basketball courts. I think that's a great addition to that park because I know we've done the skate park at Verdugo Park. Um, and so that would be great because it does kind of go with the theme of the skate park where it's lots of colors and designs. Um, and patterns. So I personally like, it. I don't know if I have a question, I'm sorry. I guess I, I did have a question. If you can repeat one more time what you did say about cultural diversity in the piece, because I'm, I'm not sure I picked that up. Yeah, it's just a, so it's a more of an abstract representation of the diversity of Glendale itself through color and shape merging together as one. So I think um, through all of my designs, I'm really trying to bring uh, a feeling of joy and connectedness and excitement through vibrant colors and use of shape and movement. And so I think this is my abstract interpretation of the diverse community of Glendale's coming together in one cohesive structure and just the celebration of that through this. Okay, thank you so much. That answered my question. I wanted to just comment on um, the full wraparound design with the basketball court, just to clarify this, that would be an additional project outside of the proposed um, project. But I, I'm happy to, if there needs to be further conversation after this, happy to take on um, any more questions about that as far as budget and timeline and things like that. I've done several basketball courts here. So I work with um, a licensed contractor that specializes in concrete work and installations. They do much of LAUSD's installations with paint and asphalt um, construction. So I'm happy to answer any additional questions should the basketball court um, 
or even the, the seating areas become a, a further interest of you all. Thank you. Chairperson Yank. Yes, thank you so much for your presentation, Erin. Um, I was just curious, you kind of touched on it just now, but the, the ground elements um, yeah. of the building, I was just curious how, how you work with that, those ground elements so that they're maintained and they continue to look good over time, because I, I imagine that those do get the most wear and tear, obviously, of any of the painted surfaces. They do. And what I try to do, so what we'll do is there's two routes we could take. If we do end up doing the basketball court there, I would go with their product that they can buy the company I work with in um, bulk because this area is such a small amount um, cost wise and even production wise. Um, we would probably just go with an asphalt concrete um, from like a Sherwin Williams or a high end company, which I have done basketball courts in before. But what I tried to do with this, and I kept that in mind because there was going to be so much wear and tear on this area, was keeping it, cl it close to the edge of the building. I don't think you're going to see as much wear up against that wall. But here's what I say to all my clients with murals on the wall or on the ground. Um, these murals are made to grow with the space over time, meaning natural elements are going to hit it. People are going to walk on it. People are going to touch it. That's actually how I kind of design my murals. And I want to celebrate that. If there is wear on it, I think that there it becomes more beautiful over time in finding those kind of imperfections and touches and, and feet print along the way. But all that to say, if it is something that uh, the city would like to keep pristine, it's easily touched up. It it has um, with the the basketball courts. The company I use, they have a five year warranty. Will they they will touch it up? But these are like these will last years and years. Um, it will have some natural wear. Um, but for the most part, you're gonna it, you won't have issues with it looking as if it's completely gone versus like you might have feet print on it. Thank you so much. Um, and no then problem. I, I don't know if you have this at your fingertips, but if we were, if there was going to be a basketball court addition just for our information, would that, what would that like budget look like? And if that's something that we can come back to you about, that's fine too. Yeah, I think let's come back to it because I can get some hard numbers from the company. Um, at this point, I don't have those numbers. Um, and I'm also curious, like it could be something to where I can work with you guys within your budget. If, if it doesn't meet a full court coverage, we can look at what it means to get at least new lines and some elements brought in there but i think that there's a way that we could make it happen um but let me let me revisit this number with you and i can get you that um in the next few days thank you so much no problem additional questions thank you so much mayor aaron for joining us uh, if you have any questions regarding the process you're welcome to reach out to the last projects but uh, we really appreciate you joining us today Thank you. I really appreciate your time. Okay. Okay. Well, our last uh, presenter is Ernesto Maneje. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. We do have Ndivisio Koye back. Uh, if you'd like to ask some additional questions, I'm going to admit him into the meeting now. Question. Ndivisi, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Vidor, did you have any questions for UNDVC? Uh, I, well, there is there is one. I think you had mentioned that you know you had one of the facades as the space for your you belong um, mural, and then if we were going to go completely around the building, you would come up with something else. And I, you know, obviously would just like to see that flushed out because I don't really. I don't see the particular mural you showed us as being something that could be stretched around a building. So um, anything you're going to add there would have to be it would have to be amended onto your presentation. It's really mm -hmm. hard to evaluate it 
thinking thinking about it just being one side and you know trying to uh, project on what you might do. So yeah, um, well, my thoughts. I always wanted to do the entire facade, um, but in my initial conversations with the planning team, they were saying like just one facade is the focal point of this uh, RFQ. So that's what I focused on. Um, but me as an artist, I obviously would want to extend it and make it as big as possible. Um, so yeah, it would just be more faces, more pattern work around the facade if that was even allowed. Okay, thank you. No problem. Commissioner Zadorian? Uh, I believe that was my exact same question, but if you were to wrap it around, if that falls within the $50,000 budget or if that's included in that? Well, that would be included in that. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Chairperson Yink? No, that was my, those were my questions as well. So you, you've answered those. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. And DBC, I'm glad we were able to connect with you again. And if you have any additional questions, you're welcome to reach out to Labasse Projects. All right. No problem. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think the last presenter we have is Anessa Marante. Let's admit him. Anessa, are you there? Hello. Hi, Nissa, how are you? Are you, um, there we go, we see you. <laughs> uh, welcome, thanks for joining us. If you'd like to share your screen now, we can you can begin your presentation whenever you're ready. Thank you. All right, can everyone see our screen? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Hillary. I'm Ernesto's wife and help him out with mural projects. So I'm going to be running through the presentation with him. All right. So to start off, here is the design concept. I know it's very long and small. So as I go, it will get bigger. But just so you guys can see, this is the entirety of the design. And this is what will wrap around the exterior of the bathroom. So here it is broken into two chunks. So you can get a little bit of a better view. Uh, so Ernesto paints um, flora and fauna. So this is kind of using your community as inspiration and using Ernesto's um, style. So all of the plants and animals that you see represent different um, parts of the community. So this is a Syrian brown bear and down below is a uh, Caucasian lynx. And these are found in the forests of Armenia to represent the Armenian community in Glendale. Um, let me just pull up my phone so I can tell you what everything is. Um, this right here is the national bird of South Korea. It is the oriental magpie. And we also have um, this here, this hibiscus, the magahuana hibiscus is the national flower of South Korea. Um, this pink flower up here is the Mexican dahlia, which is the national flower of Mexico. And below is the uh, crested caracara, which is the national bird of Mexico. Over in the corner here, we have um, wild mangoes that originate from Africa to represent the African American population. And over here, we have the uh, Sempaguita, which is the national flower of the Philippines, um, along with the city of Glendale in the background. So we have everything labeled here. And this is what will look like on the exterior of the building. So the uh, Syrian bear is a big focus. Here is the Caracara in the city of Glendale. We have the lynx, the mango, the flowers of the Philippines and South Korea, and the magpie. So um, you can see that all of those different elements just kind of overlap and represent the shared story of the community. Um, and the cityscape in the Glendale is uh, in the background, kind of like bringing everything together. So all of these characters and different flora and fauna just kind of are living together, just like the residents of the city live together. Um, the design will be um, a seamless transition. It will just wrap around nicely around the whole building. Um, we're gonna incorporate um, different um, volumetric shapes um, it, that are highly rendered along with some flatter shapes to give the design a lot of interest. Do you have anything to add on the design or? Um, no, that's great. <laughs> I know, I just kind of word vomited it all out there. 
Um, and we had previously talked about maybe incorporating the basketball court. So if that was an option, we would love to bring the design into the basketball court as well. Uh, and just to give everyone an example of um, Ernesto's design process, we put a few um, past mock-ups in their completed murals just to give a good idea of his process. So this is a previous mock-up he did in South Florida. Um, this is a Florida panther and some local flora and fauna from there. And this is the end result. This is the completed mural, just so you can see his design to his completed mural. We have a couple in here. So this was a mock-up and its completed mural in North Miami. This was a mock-up for the city of Ocala and its completed mural. They used um, some live plants and its ears and nose. And one more, I think, a mock-up and its completed mural. So hopefully this gives you guys a good idea of the finished product. Um, the rest of the presentation is just logistics stuff. So we just broke down the budget. Um, we're coming from South Florida, so um, some of the budget will go there. Then obviously supplies, lift rental, insurance. Uh, we think it will take about two weeks to paint this. Um, so this is just a little schedule breakdown. And we'll just have a few work area requests, of course, water, power, bathroom, um, storage area, that kind of thing. Um, we could go over this. I know it's a little not important right now, a little boring, but just for your notes. Um, I know varnishing was a part of the, the RFP, so we work with a third party um, and they've traveled with us all over. Um, so we would contract with them just to get the varnish, which would have graffiti and UV protection. And that's it. So I'll just put it back here. Do you guys have any questions about the design? Trivi door. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, no questions at this point. Commissioner Zadorian. Uh, me as well. Thank you for actually including the maintenance um, facts on your proposal. I don't have any further questions. Chairperson Yank. Um, yeah, I, I'm good too. <laughs> very, very thorough presentation. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And um, if you have any additional questions, you're welcome to reach out to Labras Projects, but you're able to exit the meeting now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Chairperson Yank. Um, just to clarify, we had uh, talked to the Parks Department about options for a basketball court and that, and at this time they were not interested in doing a basketball court. They are the landlord, and so we have to abide by uh, their requests. Uh, we'll be happy to share this with them, so I mean encourage them to watch it so they can see the potential, and then perhaps we could incorporate uh, a basketball court in the future. And just to clarify, that would be that would be like an additional site or RFP that would we would make. Uh, it would be additional, yes. So, but we have mentioned the p potential for a basketball court going into it, so I, that's why the artists are including it. Um, but I think we had clarified. I think they were just all kind of excited about the potential of doing a basketball court, but. Um, I think the potential for the building is great as well. And I think once they see these, um, I, I think in the future they might be interested. And remember, we still have uh, some additional uh, slots with Labasse. So I think, and we'll definitely, we were planning an additional mural. So I think, you know, we'll, we'll definitely bring that and hopefully we can convince them that a basketball court would be the way to go for a future mural. I think some of the questions from Parks actually, uh, in particular with the, the basketball murals, were concerns about uh, long-term maintenance and conservation, um, but I asked Aaron Miller Ray had discussed there are actually companies that it's not just rolling paint, it's actually painted asphalt, so it's, it's very permanent and we can maybe alleviate some of their concerns. But we do have other uh, undetermined artwork locations uh, in the future, so we can maybe address those with Parks and then potentially include this as a next uh, next step. 
No, I, I feel like since we did, that would require an additional RFP process for the basketball court that we should not consider the basketball um, presentations as we're discussing and just, just think about the building and, and what the artists have presented in terms of the building. Okay. Um, so I think we can move to discussion, um, and I'd love to get a sense from my fellow commissioners just of how your um, your comments on each of the presentations and, and how you're feeling. In terms Hello. Of, um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe we can start with you. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, my apologies, Commissioner Vidor. Um, Commissioner, uh, Chairperson Yank, would you please speak into the microphone? GTV6 isn't picking up your, your sound. Okay. <laughs> Thank <Sorry>. you. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Vidor. So um, I will say that they, they were all very nicely presented. Um, aside from the fact that I wasn't quite sure each project was dealing with the same things, uh, I thought they all did a nice job and it was well thought out and they looked at the call and they considered uh, what we're looking for, but um, you know, I, I feel like at this point in the process, we've we've put some art out there, and we have to step back and look at the direction we're going at. And I, I'll say up front that my favorite is Aaron's, uh, the the Glendalian with the rather abstract sculptural look, and my second favorite uh, would be as an alternate uh, David's um, because of the universality of his message. Uh, you belong can apply to anybody and does apply to everybody and anybody. I think that was in Debussy. What? That was the second one, not the first. So the one. second one, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I said David. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, not David. Um, Debussy. Uh, so um, and and I like the those aspects of those two um, uh, proposals, but to look at the other ones and no disrespect to the artists because I think they. They all did a beautiful job, and they're obviously very talented. But I, I sense that we're we're moving in a direction to kind of pigeonhole ourselves here. We have a beautiful flora, fauna, uh, mosaic mural in Dugmajian Park now that's rather large and covers that. We have um, we've curated uh, Temit Gomar, which is a floral depiction. Uh, that speaks both to the Armenian and Tongva cultures. We have our tree sculpture. Uh, we have a beautiful mural of somebody meditating in the woodlands. And we have, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Glen, the, the Glen Oaks project is kind of related to the Verdugo Mountains. And, you know, I realize that those are all very thematic and strong elements of our city. Um, but, you know, physically and culturally, there are a lot of things that are, you know, really resonant here. But that doesn't mean we can't um, diversify away from that. And I and I would hate for us, seeing as we're trying to be an arts mecca and really, you know, rise up to a certain level, that we've got to. Um, this is going to sound harsh, okay? So get ready. <laughs> we've got to try to not get away from, but think about how we want to do depictions of flora, fauna, the mountains. Um, the, the major predominant ethnic groups in the community and maybe take a different tracks. In other words, like diversity can mean that the art can be very diverse and it doesn't necessarily have to be prescribed within a certain framework. And I, I think that the calls, you know, they mentioned that we have large populations of different ethnic groups and we're very diverse. Um, but, you know, below that line, there are many, many other cultures, and there are also aspects of the city um, that haven't been touched on too much. And we keep seeing the same thematic elements, you know, flora and fauna that depict uh, specific countries, our mountains, and those are all great. We love animals, we love flora and fauna, but, um, you know, I would like to see us focus on uh, getting some art that's a little bit more. Um, conceptual and abstract in its ability to convey an emotion or a thought or something about us. Maybe we'll learn more things about us if we take a different track. So uh, Aaron's um, abstraction with color, number one. Um, BC's You Belong, number two for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Sadorian? Um, I actually completely agree with Commissioner Arlene Vador. 
which is unfortunate because I would like to have a you know differing opinion. Um, so hopefully the third voice can be that because we I want to argue. Yeah, we do. Um, because we do want to represent the community. However, I do agree with everything that she stated, um, mainly because we want to get away from the literal art and kind of move towards the abstract, something that has, you know, makes people think uh, outside the box, less little imaging and representation of a specific group of people and more about what does this represent to the average person who's walking by. Um, so I really enjoyed Aaron's piece, so that would be my first piece, and my second would be Ndubisi. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, and mainly because I know we're trying not to think about the basketball courts and other items, but I would love for the for Dugo Park to be the park that has the structure of a wall mural, benches, a basketball court, somewhere where you go and you see art throughout the entire park, you know, an art park, as we've been talking about for years now on the commission. So that is my choice in first and second. I think all the other artists and proposals, however, because they were all beautiful, but I think that is what we're going towards as a commission and a city. And can I just, I've, for, you reminded me of something that I forgot to say, and that is with, with Aaron's in particular, but also with um, uh, the second gentleman, the, the, her concept of taking the artification of all the physical structures, uh, benches, uh, chairs, whatever is in the park, and incorporating them into this installation is really a nice idea um, and something that we should do somewhere, and it looks like this might be the place. So um, I hope somehow that the Parks Department would be, if not the basketball court, would be willing to take other elements in the park that are hardscape and let her include those things in her in her installation. Uh, thank you both commissioners. Just to remind you as per, as per Director Schaefer, we are focusing on the mural and any benches and additional parts will have to be a different discussion. I think that's a, I feel that that's a good thing to, yeah, to keep in mind for future potential sites um, that, we're, that we're identifying. Um, I wanted to just ask a, a point of clarification in terms of um, NBC's presentation. There seemed to be a misunderstanding in terms of what he could propose um, for the mural, one facade versus the entire um, the entire building. So I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, I'm not sure where that miscommunication. Obviously, there was some miscommunication. Um, you know, obviously the other three artists all proposed the full wraps. I think that's actually in the RFP that we sent them. Um, you know, I do, I mean, at least uh, NDBC has suggested that he wanted to wrap the whole thing and that the budget still maintains for him to have the ability to do that. Um, you know, in case we wanted to, you know, if he was selected, we could take a next stage where we sort of like maybe add a, a layer where we get another level of approval on a, on a full wrap. But I think he, suggested that he was willing to do that and that it would fit within the budget. Yeah, I just, I wanted to make sure that he he had like the same, you know, opportunity as, as the other artists because I was very compelled by his story and his inspiration and just the message of the mural. Um, and I feel that like I, I actually do agree with my fellow commissioners that um, according to what was presented, Aaron Miller Ray would be my first choice and NDBC would be my second choice, but I also feel like NDBC is not getting a full consideration because of this miscommunication. Um, so I, I wonder, um, yeah, I wonder what options are available to us in that situation. Um, I, you know, I would I would have to defer uh, to the commission. I'm, I think you know we shared the same information with all the artists, including the renderings, including the full turnarounds and all the architectural plans. Um, you know, we we did have the same conversation, and, and Nikki, uh, I believe that in the RFP that we sent for this, uh, it included the, the language that it would potentially be it would be up to them to either wrap the entire building or any individual wall. I don't think we narrowed it to one wall. So obviously there's miscommunication. I, I think we agree. We would love to have seen NBC provide a, a full rendering, but we did share 
the full architectural plans of the whole building with with all of the others. Did you want to? Uh, no further comment yeah. than that. I mean, he had the same opportunity as everyone else. If we were to select, um, since we seem to be in alignment, uh, Aaron as the primary and NDBC as the alternate, would NDBC have a have an opportunity to? Um, you know, to prepare more of a presentation or would that not be possible? Um, I'd have to defer to the city attorney's office, but I think we have, uh, we have selected artists before and asked for more detailed renderings before. Um, we just did that with Paul Hedgecott. So I don't see why that would be a problem, but I'd have to ask uh, city attorney's office to weigh in on that. I think if we did it, that we wouldn't select somebody now, we would ask into BC to provide a full return and then make a decision post? I I don't know that we could do that. So perhaps city attorney's office can weigh in on that. Yeah, Chairperson Yank and members of the commission. I, I think that, I mean, to an extent, um, the, that, that uh, proposal could be modified a little bit you know, as I think the commission in the past has asked for a little bit of clarification, um, but if if the commission is anticipating that it may want to change its you know its you know flip around its first recommendation and alternate recommendation depending on um, you know how this concept is further refined, I think it would have to come back you know again to the commission you know for reconsideration. Okay. Um, I think I'm, I'm happy to move forward with Aaron as the primary, uh, but my fellow commissioners, I don't know if, if you feel otherwise. I just wanted to make sure that we were making a fair decision. Um, um is the design that was presented, well, all their designs, is that like etched, like this is the design, or was it more conceptual? It's, I would say conceptual as we've looked at other artists as well, because right, there could be modifications if, you know, we find. Like she made like other shapes than some of the ones she did, and so she might modify it, and you're, yeah, that's like, happening with other projects like you'll, too. You'll notice, what I noticed was, I think with Aaron's, like she showed the cutout of the window, you know, that there's a like a concession stand or something in that building. And I don't know that the artist, other artists did that, but I could be, I could have missed that. Right. So right. I think um, uh, we have asked for additional things. I think what city attorney's office though is, is clarifying that like if he presents a new design, he's still staying in the number two slot. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I <clears throat> feel very comfortable with uh, Erin as the initial choice because her concept really appeals to me. So, um, you know, I'm good with that and him second with the you yeah. belong. And, and we have to remember we're making recommendations to city council. They will see both and they obviously also have, you know, the discretion to choose um, either of the concepts. Okay, I'm very comfortable with that. I think we could go ahead and move forward if everybody's ready. Yeah, Unless me you have as other well. Comments, sorry. No, no, I'm I'm good, and I think. Um, okay, I can make the motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll make a motion to recommend that the city council authorize the city manager or designate to enter into an agreement for the commission of artwork with an artist art team, specifically Aaron Miller Ray, to design, fabricate, and install a public art piece for the Verdugo Park mural in an amount not to exceed fifty thousand dollars dispersed from the Urban Art Program Fund. Second. So just for the, the motion, I will include. Sorry, the I read the wrong motion. I, I read it's, it off it's the agenda. Accurate. I'm sorry. No, it's accurate. I'm just going to include into the record the two sorry. recommendations. So the first recommendation is Aaron Miller Ray for the artwork uh, for Dugo Park mural, and an alternate recommendation to BC Okoye for You Belong. Correct. So we have Commissioner Vidor as a second. I'll do yes. roll call. Commissioners Vidor? Yes. The Dorian? Yes. Chairperson Yank? Yes. We are at agenda item three, which is adjournment. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Thank you.